What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today we're taking a look at Atlux, which is a visualization plugin for Unreal Engine. So in a nutshell, looking at the website, as you can see, it's a one-stop solution for setting up studio lighting all inside of Unreal Engine, which is really crazy because there's no guesswork involved. You have access to all these different presets. You have the white boxes here. You have railings for your camera. Everything is just set up for you to be creative. And even you can render it out all with one click so let's just jump in. Let me show you how it works. So right now we're inside of Unreal Engine 5 and 5.3 to be exact. And if you look right here in the middle, we have the Atlux icon, which I'm going to click on this. And let me close my content browser because on the left hand side, this is where I have it docked. But you can see right off the bat, we have all the studio presets that you need to get started. Now, the way that I like to work, I like to start a new level so I don't have to worry about deleting all this stuff out. So I just come right here to where it says create new studio level. Left click on this and let's just get started off with the photo studio. So I'm going to left click here. Then it's going to ask me to save my current changes to my current level. Click on yes. And once it's done working this magic, you'll see you have everything in here to get set up. Now, right off the bat, you can see the attention to detail that went into this plugin because our camera here, it's actually set up as a DSLR. Let me zoom in a little bit closer to it so you can see. So this is a DSLR camera, which is just our camera inside of Unreal Engine. But, you know, the attention to detail is much appreciated. We even have a lot of detail when it comes to our lighting here. You can see we have a white box. And if I left click on it and I drag it down, you can actually see my stand is going up and down. But here, look at this. This is the cool part. So if I go all the way up, you can actually see that we get springs that are attached to the roof. would actually go up and down with our light there. And if you look at the beam, it's actually going with the beam as well. So if I move this over like so, you can see that the top is attached to the beam, which is attached there to our spring. So there's a lot of detail that went into this plugin just on the visual side, because this isn't even stuff that's going to render out. This is just strictly for the aesthetics inside the viewport, which I always thought was really nice. Now, let me click back again on my camera here, because you can see right now we have our logo in here right in the middle. And this is just to help you get adjusted. Like you can see the studio lighting there on the chrome side and also just with our white sphere right there. But you might notice if I come over here in my outliner under cameras, we have the Atlas target. So if I left click on this and actually move this around in my scene, you can see that the camera and the lights are all attracted to this target right here. So no matter where I move it at in my scene, everything is going to be aligned to this target, which is really nice because you want to put it where your product is going to be. But you might notice even if I move closer to the camera, everything is going out of focus here. So this also controls your depth of field, which works directly just like a real camera. And it makes it all easy for you because before, you know, you had to go into your cameras, set up your lightings there with your f-stop and everything to get the correct depth of field. But it's nice just to be able to go through and have it focus right here. So let me actually delete this out here. And if I come back to my outliner, I could take out the 3D example and let's just throw an instrument in here just for an example, because I want to show you guys how easy it is to get set up and get rendered out. So let's look for an instrument that we could just throw in here just for the example's sake. Actually, let's bring it into Reg zero. So I'm going to come down here, zero everything out. Let me actually rotate this just a tad bit. And then I'm going to click on my target here. Just move my target to a better align with my instrument. And let's say we want to get maybe just this part right here. Like this is a nice shot right here that we see. And let's say we want to rotate this on a 360 turntable. So if I come over here, actually under my sequence, under my Atlas plugin, I'm going to click on sequence. I'm going to come right here and I'm just going to click and drag a turntable into my scene here. And if you do that, you see under my outliner, it automatically adds it here, in which I could put this into rec zero. Then I could put my model rendered in the turntable and it's actually going to rotate with it. So let me left click, drag it under here. And of course we have to make our mesh stationary. So I'm going to click on this. We're going to come down here, the transforms, and then we're going to make this stationary. And now I should be able to left click, drag it under my turntable, just like so. Now, if I click on play, you can see that it's rotating inside of our scene here. And that means that it's properly lined up with our turntable. So let me actually stop that in my scene, click back on turntable. And let's actually look at some of the attributes down here because we actually have turntable turned on. If I click on floating, let me play again. And now you can see it's actually hovering up and down along with rotating as well. So looking at some more of this stuff, the duration, we have it set for five seconds. 
you can actually make it rotate faster if you want to make it shorter we have it going clockwise i mean there's a lot of stuff that you could do down here and you have at your disposal but let's say we're happy with how it's rotating actually i'm going to turn off floating and let's render this out so it's really easy i'm just going to come up here to render let me close my content browser and we have a couple of options over here under the settings so for quick this is just going to be what your lumen render if i go to real you can see that's going to be a path tracer at hd and then production it's going to be path tracing at 4k with no denoising or anything so what i'm going to do right now is just actually click on quick because we're just going to do a quick lumen render for output i'm going to do a sequence here and then for total frames i could just do 150 for right now at 30 frames per second no biggie and then you're going to pick your output path as well for render title i can just type in tutorial but this right here is where we can actually set up our different settings so by default it's going to be at 720p for quick but i could easily bring this up to hd or 2k but let's just do 1080 for this and then under naming i'm actually going to leave on my render title i'm going to turn off date time render pass i'm going to leave on frame number because we're doing a sequence here but then i'm also going to turn off batch model so the one thing i would say is keep the frame number on especially if you're doing a render sequence because you definitely need to know what frame you're on so i'm going to close this back up for quality i could come down here you can make it ultra but actually let me click on custom quality because you notice maybe if i go to low you can see that my samples are actually changing out so my quality is actually going to be dependent on the samples that we have here so go up to ultra you can see that's changing it out here but i'm just going to do it at high for right now then i'm going to keep going down we have path tracing turned off at the moment i'm going to leave it as a png but we can easily do a jpeg an exr if you want you could do apple prores here as well i'm going to turn off the noising but that's really just for if you're doing path tracing leave on motion blur and then everything else should be as is but the one cool thing i thought as well is if you did render passes everything set up for you to do render passes as well it's not as complicated as just using the movie render queue because we could do base color metallic z depth which is usually pretty hard to get set up in there you could do ambient occlusion like this is just all one click solutions to make everything really easy to render out so let's say you're happy with how everything is here we don't even have to set up a sequencer you just come down here to where it says shoot i'm just going to click on shoot you can see that we have the movie render queue all set up right here it's fuzzy right now because this is at low quality inside the preview of course but i like how it's actually branded with the at looks there and once it's done rendering this is the result that we got so this was rendered out with lumen at hd so we're inside of unreal engine 5 right now let's start with a brand new scene again so i'm going to come over here the at looks i'm going to come under studio presets create new level so i'm going to left click on this and let's just say we want to see what tracking looks like so i'm going to left click on this and now we have our studio set up just like we saw there before inside of our other scene so let's come down here to content browser because i do have a model my friend keyframe is let me used in here so i'm going to bring this into exact zero in here let me scale this up a little bit and then rotate this 90 degrees now if i look through my camera you can see that we have the really cool sculpture in there so let me actually delete the sample like so because i want to give my friend all his glory here he let me use this sculpt that he sculpted out that looks really nice in there so big shout out to keyframe i'll leave his art station down below if you want to check out any of his work but let's say that we want to change up this studio setting we don't maybe like the lighting or something like that so let me come over to mist and you can see everything just switched up right off the bat there so even we have the neon lights and everything that switched out in here let's go over to nerf studio lighting change up again you can see that we have some different railings in there so you can see how we have some really cool presets in here and if we wanted to we can actually have all this stuff self animating along the rails so if i come over here to sequence and let's say our railing settings i'm just going to leave them at default for this example but i'm going to come down here to where we have our sequence i'm going to keep it at 150 frames 30 frames per second for sequence name let's name it keyframe after my buddy there and then i'm just going to prepare the level sequence like so so left click on this and this automatically sets up a sequencer for you down here so if i actually click on my camera click on play you can see it automatically has everything keyframed out for you so you don't have to go through and mess with anything you can always go through and you can adjust these if you need like if you don't like how the railing's going down there you can actually move it up so none of this stuff is destructive you can actually go through and customize all this stuff in here 
but let's say if you're not quite happy with that studio setup and you need some motivation you can always come down here to where it says ai randomize and if i just left click on this it's just going to randomly put some stuff together for you to just get you started so let's say you don't like any of these presets that are in here just click on randomize see what it gives you and maybe you could just work from there because you can always come up here to the top and you can add some more stuff in here like we have a dome we have a room you have the ceiling grid in there if you want you have a platform if i come over here to lighting we looked at this a little bit earlier but we can always add like a light one let's say you want to add this in here just to light that up back there like so and then maybe we want to put like a light box in here let's say we want to throw an area light in here maybe we have an area light up top so you can see that you can just come through here you can just randomly start lighting your scene and everything's going to be aligned to that target that we looked at there earlier now it does have a special feature in there that i want to go over a little bit that i thought was really neat and that's because they actually added a 360 camera in here which i know is typically tough for a lot of people to set up but we do have a preset in here if i come over here to sequence and then i look right here you see we have a 360 camera so if i click and drag this into my scene you can actually see we have a 360 camera that is in here for us and we can adjust this so if you have like an outdoor environment or something of that nature that you want to get a 360 render out of we actually have a 360 camera in here that will give you a basic setup now it's not going to have any advanced features or anything like this is just in there as a bonus but if you want it to render out maybe like your own hdrs or if you're doing like a 360 vr sequence this is easily drag and droppable into your scene to get you started so i'm going to delete this one now let me come back over to lighting let's just say we want to do this one right here because we can easily add different lighting in here as well so like i'm in my hdr world but i'm just adding all these different lights so it's not adding the psych or anything like that like these are just strictly lighting presets that you could go in here and adjust as well and let's say if we wanted to add maybe like some camera moves to come over here to sequence you can actually add like roller coaster but it's saying I have to select my camera first, of course. So I'm going to select my DSLR, which I have right here. Select roller coaster. And now it's automatically adjusted to the camera. If I wanted to do maybe semi-circle instead, now we have it set up for theirs. So if I click on circle, boom, we got full circle there. So we can see how easy it is just to really hit these buttons and get going. Now for anybody doing any type of product renders or let's say you're doing any type of character stuff like with metahumans or character creator this will get you set up immensely it's not really built for outdoor scenes or anything like that like this is more for studio settings but if you're looking for some type of solution like this can't suggest this more you saw how easy it was just to go in click some presets and get running off to the races so if you have some questions about this plugin leave me a comment down below be happy to answer anything that you might be running into i've been using that for a couple of months now so i'm pretty familiar with it plus also make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you in the next video i'll see you soon take care